EO Foods is on a mission to turn African superfoods into everyday American foods. Welcome, Toyin. Hey, my name is Toy Kolowale. I am the founder and CEO of EO Foods. I'd like to get, start, get started by telling you how and why I got started in food. So I was born in Nigeria before moving to the United States about 20 years ago. And I often joke with my friends, uh, these three words, have you eaten? It's kind of like the ultimate expression of love um, from mothers in, in, in my community growing up in Nigeria. And I've heard a lot of similar things from a lot of other immigrant communities. So it's kind of like the same way I've raised my two sons. I have two sons, uh, you know, tapped into my Nigerian heritage. And I would every day use ingredients that I grew up with to create everyday American foods like pancakes and waffles. Next slide, please. All right, so I like this slide because it kind of shows you examples of some of our products and it gives me an opportunity to talk very quickly about what our comparative advantages are. So there are three pillars that when I founded the company that we kind of use to develop the products that we offer to the market. I'll illustrate the first pillar, nutrition, using an example of Fonio. Fonio, also known as Seeds of the Universe, um, is a very powerful grain um, native to West Africa. Fonio has three times the fiber and protein of rice flour. It has half the calories of quinoa, and it has one of the highest calcium of any grain in the world. Um, I mentioned nutrition. Uh, the next one is taste. Our cassava waffle and pancake mix. The best way I can kind of illustrate that, I'm going to use a quick example. So for anyone that is familiar with Beyond Meat, so think about what Beyond Meat is to the burger industry. Um, if you're familiar with CSA Foods, it's a me Mexican-American company. Uh, they have this amazing cassava tortilla, um, you know, wraps. And one of the great things about these two examples I gave is you can actually enjoy foods just the way you know them. The difference is that it's made with better ingredients. That's why our cassava waffle or pancake makes the perfect example. You make pancakes and waffles for your children or for your family, and it tastes just like pancakes and waffles, uh, but, you know, it's made with exciting ingredients. Um, to, the, to the right of your screen is functionality. As an African immigrant, I had often seen African superfoods trend in the marketplace, whether it was in Amazon. But for some reason, they have just never really connected to the broader American consumer. And my, what I thought about that was that it was lacking functionality. So when we think about how we introduce African ingredients and superfoods into the American space, what we're really talking about is plant-based, um, healthy, nutritious, uh, you know, nutrient-rich, flavorful ingredients that we can use to make everyday American ingredients. That's why these kombucha crackers that we're going to launch in Q2, Q2 of 2022, I'm really excited about. It's made with fermented cassava. If you're a West African immigrant, you know what that is. It's made with kombucha culture, and it's just really delicious, and that's why that's a perfect example of kind of like the functionality. Next slide, please. All right, so on this slide, I wanted to just show you how customers use our products. I talked about nutrition. I talked about taste. I talked about functionality. It's important for me to highlight this because I remember when I started about four years ago, a lot of people would say she sells African food, even though I was holding pancakes in my hand. So I like to use this slide to illustrate that what we do is create nutritious, delicious foods that are functional to the average American consumer using African ingredients and superfoods to set ourselves apart from the market. These are actual customer pictures uh, from our Instagram page. Next slide, please. So what has all this meant? I, I talked a little bit about how I grew up, how I started the company, the fact that we're focused on nutrition, taste, and functionality. This just gives you an example of kind of like our growth over the last, uh, we started in late 2016, over the last four and a half years. And the first year of the business, we had just over $50,000 in revenue. But last year, we closed at um, over $2 million in revenue, actually almost $3 million in revenue, with 50% in gross margin and 12% in net profit. I'm going to talk a little bit in the break room about, um, you know, the dip you see there in, in the growth. Um, part of it was because of COVID last year. Also, because we've been involved in a very deep school rationalization to focus on the products that have given us the best growth and our customers love the most. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we're projecting that we're going to hit $45 million by 2025, and here's how we're going to do that. I'm using this slide to illustrate more of our products and how we're going to get there. We're going to focus on flour and flour products. Using cassava flour as an example, that's one of our best sellers. Cassava flour is one of the fastest growing grain free flours in the United States today. Um, when you go to Expo West or any food show, you will, if you see any product, whether it's pizza, whether it's crackers, whether it's pancakes, even soup, even gummy 
ideas. If you see any product that says grain free, gluten free, chances are that, that they have cassava flour or tapioca flour, which is a derivative of cassava flour, is over 60%. This is why this is one of our top selling flours. Um, cassava cauliflower baking mix, I like to use one of an example just to illustrate how intuitive our products are to the average American consumer. Last year when we launched this baking mix, we sold about 300 units in November. As of March of this year, we had orders for over 300,000 units of this particular SKU. Um, the Tiger Nut Crackers, I promise you have nothing to do with tigers. Um, tiger Nut is a superfood. I can talk about that in the great break room, but that's just an example of the, the innovation that we bring to everyday American food using African ingredients and superfoods. Next slide, please. And this is our last slide, I believe. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I will finish the slides in the break room, but I'm going to leave it open for questions. Thank you, Toyin. This is an excellent presentation and three cheers for you for being so patient. Um, I'm sure we Thank all you. want to learn more and those kombucha crackers sure sound tempting. Kristen, would you like to start with feedback for Toyin? Yeah, so one, I just want to say thank you so much for this presentation. I am so excited. Your passion comes through, clearly your nutritional knowledge, and then also sourcing. So I would just love to know a little bit about behind your numbers, who do you see buying this and who do you think should be or could be buying this um, as we move forward? Like, who are your best? Uh, so, that, so that was one of the first things we started trying to learn once we launched um, in 2016, who's our customer? And one of the things we found out is our customers, the commonality within our customers are more qualitative. So if you think about the kind of customer that would love kombucha, kombucha crackers, if you look at the kind of customer that would buy Beyond Meat, which is over a billion dollars, I believe, uh, or was it impossible for devaluation? Think about Siete Foods, where they launched um, uh, tortilla wraps, and they've raised over $90 million in revenue and they're in every store. So if you're thinking about the consumer that's focused on wellness, oh, thank you, I can see the, I can see the sample. So if you're thinking about the consumer that's focused on wellness, and is looking for excitement, but at the same time familiarity, that's the kind of consumer that we target. So we see a commonality in more in qualitative factors. So we might have a 50 year old from Iowa, you know, and a 25 year old from New York, but we, that's the kind of common theme we see um, amongst our consumers. Thank you. Thank you for this. I want to hand it over to Trevor. Yeah, Toyin, I had a, a question for you. Um, just understanding, kind of building on, on Kristen's question, like, what does your, your production workflow look like? What sort of facilities do you have? How do you all get your product um, you know, to, to market? And then from there, what is your, your distribution? And where are you all showing up? I, those are a lot of questions, but I guess what I'm wondering is from the incredible concept and the, the essentially the ingredients to you know where it's being made, where it's being distributed, and then is it, is it across the US or is it regional right now or what have you? Okay, so I'll take uh, two parts first, and I know that that question was, uh, was, had a lot of parts. I'll try to jump off um, in the breakout room. So in terms of production, when I started the company, I didn't want to pour too much money in capital expenditure. So one of the things we did was kind of develop joint partnerships with our sourcing partners and companies in, in, um, in Nigeria specifically and other West African countries to kind of develop that supply chain. So that is in terms of production. We produce in Illinois. Um, we just started co-packing as well because of the sudden growth in our business which is one of the reasons why we're trying to waste funds so that we can increase our capacity. Um, our capacity. I'm going to talk very quickly about distribution. Uh, distribution was tough at the beginning. You know, we'd be in front of grocery store buyers, and usually I would hear questions like, how many Africans shop our store? Initially, I used to get very annoyed, and I would say, well, you have Greek yogurt. Did you ask how many people from Greece shop your store? And then I had to take a step back and say, you cannot be picking up buyers. You have to figure out a way to communicate with buyers. So we took a step back and we started working on our packaging, we started working on our branding and our messaging to say, if I'm talking to a buyer, the buyer has a question, a customer is gonna have that question. So in terms of distribution, we start, we're doing very well on Amazon. Um, this month we're 400% over what we did last year, day to day. Uh, we're in about, about 1,000 Walmart stores. Uh, we just started the process with Heidi, with Maya, with Albertson, with Sam's Club, with Harry Teeter. I don't wanna forget anyone. And also we're co-packing for one of the most successful uh, national retailers in America today. We just started co-packing for them and that's been a very successful partnership. Thank you, Toyin. And thank you, Kristen and Trevor. Um, we'll go ahead and ask the rest of the questions in the speaker, um, the entrepreneur session. Okay. 